We just covered model combination via bootstrapping and feature bagging. And now in this video, we're going to consider an alternative approach uh, to combining models, namely via uh, boosting. So what we just did in the bootstrap aggregation and the random subspace method is uh, that we were essentially uh, obtaining a committee of models by training them on artificially created new data sets. And we relied on the idea of minimizing the variance in the expected error by averaging the resulting models. And now we take a different uh, approach to constructing a committee of models. We are now going to construct a committee of models in a sequential manner. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with the same data set, but we are just going to reweight the importance of data samples in such a way as to let each new model focus on the errors that the previous models were not able to solve. So we, we adapt a sequential optimization uh, approach. And by letting each new model focus on the errors of the previous model, uh, we eventually obtain a very strong committee of models which have complementary expertises. And this is really different to, to the bootstrap and the, the, the begging approach, where the idea was uh, we have this very uh, complex, flexible model which have, has a low bias, and now we want to reduce the variance. But now in the boosting method, we can actually work with models which actually do have a high bias. So very simple models that tend to underfit. Um, but by letting each of these new simple models focus on the errors of the other models, we can actually uh, obtain a very strong model in the end, which has a low bias. So the essential difference is that with boosting, we can work with simple uh, models to create a complex model. And uh, with the bootstrapping and the backing methods, we already start off with complex models and we just make them better by reducing the variance among these uh, models. Okay, so let's talk about boosting. So the setting is that we're working with a committee uh, which consists of multiple base classifiers. So we call the individual uh, classifiers, we call them base classifiers. And then what we will see is that the performance of the committee as a whole can be significantly better than any of the base classifiers, right? So we can, again, a very simple base classifiers that in the end result to a committee of classifiers uh, which perform significantly better than these simple models uh, alone. And now there are several methods for boosting that have these uh, kind of properties. And uh, the most popular and classic one is called ADA boost, adaptive boosting. It's, it's one of the, the simplest uh, models for, for boosting. And I think if you understand this concept of ADA boost, then you're ready also to dive into the more, more uh, complicated uh, methods for boosting. But in this course, we just consider Ada Boost as one of the main examples for boosting. And really, the strength of boosting is that it can give good results even if the base classifiers have a performance that is only slightly better than random. So that's really amazing. So if you have a very poor classifier that it's just slightly better than random, then you really can crank up the performance of such a classifier uh, via, by using Ada Boost, for example. And for that reason that we have this property of really boosting the performance, we can actually work with very simple base classifiers. Uh, and these simple models are often called weak learners. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to talk about Ada Boost in uh, the classification case, but this can also be uh, extended uh, to, re to regression. Okay, so again, I want to stress this difference between uh, bootstrapping and begging. So uh, bootstrapping, right, creating new uh, data sets or bagging using different features every time in my data set. This really is aiming at decreasing the variance among my models, whereas boosting is really focusing on decreasing the bias. So basically getting more complicated, better suited models out of the simple uh, models. And with bootstrapping, I already start off with models that have a low bias but have large variance. And actually also in the boosting, because we take these average of predictions, we also see that we uh, sort of reduce the variance, um, sorry, and uh, variance. But the main idea behind boosting is to actually decrease the bias or actually increase the expressivity of these models combined. Okay, then the recipe is as follows. So we're going to uh, train the base classifiers uh, sequentially, right? And that, that's also a reason why we actually want to work with weak and simple uh, learners because they are typically fast to compute uh, because well the next model relies on training the previous one whereas in uh, the bagging uh, or bootstrapping method I can essentially train my models in parallel right I cannot do that in this case so it's sequential and hence I want to work with fast and simple uh, classifiers 
Now the idea in this boosting algorithm is that each model is trained with a weighted form of the training set. So each data point uh, gets assigned a weight that depends on the performance of the previous classifiers. So I have, I'm working with a loss, with a loss that uh, depends on, well, my uh, input vector, the corresponding target, and an important weight, an important weight of this, uh, of this data point. And basically this weight should re uh, reflect the, the, the difficulty in classifying this uh, particular data point Xn. So if my previous classifier had a problem with classifying this particular data point to the correct uh, target, then this uh, data point should have a large uh, weight. So that's essentially given in this line. Points that are misclassified by one of the base classifiers are given a greater weight when, using, uh, when used to train the next base classifier in, in the sequence. Okay, and I'll explain in a minute how to obtain these weights and how this exact procedure uh, looks like. Uh, but the idea is now we have a sequence of models trained on a data set with, uh, in which each of the data points are weighted in a particular way. So then we have the sequence of classifiers and then my final predictions are based via a weighted average of each of these uh, classifiers. And then each of my classifiers in this sequence uh, gets again assigned a particular weight. So this is a weight uh, on the model and this weight alpha reflects basically how good this model is performing. So in this entire sequential uh, training procedure, I'm going to test how good my model is performing and I have a good, if I have a good performing model, then I have a, a large uh, weight essentially, such that when I make my final predictions and recall that I'm considering classification, uh, so these predictions, they are either minus one or one then we see that we have a sort of weighted majority vote going on here, right? So uh, in the end, my final prediction is just going to be based on the sign of my uh, weighted uh, prediction. Okay, now let's get into uh, a little bit more detail. So we have a data set of input output pairs. Uh, we are considering binary classification. So my targets are either minus one or plus one. And then as said, each data point has an associated uh, weight parameter Wn. And initially, initially, we're just going to initialize the weights uh, to a constant value. So basically each point gets assigned the same weight, uh, one over n, so, such that the sum of the total weights is just going to be, the, just going to be one. And okay, and then we, we're going to assume that we have some procedure to train a base classifier m, such that it produces a function y indexed by this particular m, uh, y of x. So we had y is just a model and we have a way of training this model given um, some weighted loss function. And this model can be anything, right? As long as it spits out a minus one or a plus one in the end, uh, and it can handle uh, weighted losses. Uh, so we can think of logistic regression, uh, decision trees, but even support vector machines can be used. But the main point is that we want to work with base classifiers, which are simple. Uh, so they're weak classifiers and they're fast uh, to optimize. Okay, and then uh, the recipe for Adaboost is uh, simple. So at each stage, a new classifier is trained on this, this weighted data set. And then um, we check which points were misclassified. And for those points, we're going to crank up the weights such that next time, maybe the next model uh, is going to do a better job on these particular uh, data points. And then when all these classifiers are trained, a committee is formed via a weighted average of all these individual uh, models. Okay, so let's have a closer look at what this algorithm actually looked like. Uh, so let, let's go over these steps. So we initialize the weights uh, with, a, with one over n, so each uh, data point gets the same weight. Then uh, we're going to build our committee. So we start off with model one. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to train my classifier. And the objective of this training procedure is to minimize this uh, sum of errors. Uh, what you see over here, this is the indicator function that returns uh, the value one whenever this criterion is satisfied and zero otherwise. So what does it say? Whenever my predicted output is unequal to the actual target, then this spits out the value one and otherwise zero. So conversely, if my uh, prediction was correct, then this thing is zero and basically my loss would be zero if, if this was the case for all data points. But if I make an error, then this sum adds um, with this weight uh, Wn. Okay, so we want to minimize this weighted sum of errors. 
Okay, and then we have a trained uh, classifier Y of M, and then we're just going to verify um, how well it was performing on this uh, training set. So we're again going to evaluate uh, this weighted sum of errors, but we're going to normalize it uh, with the, the total uh, uh, number of weights, which basically gives me a weighted error rate, right? If I make zero errors, then this term is zero all of the time. And basically my, my error uh, fraction or my error rate is zero. And if I make uh, errors 50% of the time and my weights would be uh, constant, then uh, my uh, error rate would be 0.5. But now it could be that some errors are more important than others. Uh, so what you see over here is essentially a weighted uh, error rate. And now what we're going to do with this, with this errors rate, we're going to determine a sort of weight or a scoring term for how well this particular uh, model is performing. So if my error rate is small, then uh, if one minus something is small, so this is close to one divided by something which is small, it gives a very large value. And okay, so I take the logarithm of this thing. Uh, maybe it will co become clearer later on why we take this logarithm. But the thing is, we are able to assign some value alpha m that quantifies how well this model is performing. And this alpha m is going to be my uh, model weight. So it's large, my model weight is large whenever my errors, my error rate is small. And then based on this model weight, I'm going to update um, my data point weights. So these uh, WNs. And it reads as follows. So this is again the identity or the, the indicator function. So whenever I make an incorrect prediction, this thing is one, and I'm going to multiply my weights with some uh, value which is typically larger than one. So I'm really going to increase the weights for this particular data point. And if my correction was, uh, if my prediction was correct, then this thing evaluates to zero, and then I'm multiplying with one. So essentially, I do not do any update if my uh, prediction was correct, but I do update it proportional to, well, the quality of my model if I actually made an in incorrect uh, prediction. So this basically means if I have a, a poor performing model, uh, then my alpha m takes on a relatively small value and my weights are updated a little bit. So the incorrectly classified points, they get a higher weight, but this increase in weight isn't as extreme as in the case when I have a very good performing model. If you have a very good performing model, then only a few data points uh, were misclassified uh, and hence I have a very uh, large alpha M and it's precisely these misclassified points that now also get a very strong increase in, in their, uh, their weights. Because apparently these points were very hard to classify even with a classifier which was doing a very good job. Okay, and now we have updated the weight and, and we can proceed to the next model, which is now going to try to, to sort of do a better job at the points uh, where we failed last time. And so, yeah, you do this for M of such models and then you have a very strong committee of models which are uh, ideally complementary uh, to each other. So, and then your final predictions are made by just taking a weighted average of these predictions based on these alpha M's and these alpha M's we're scoring basically uh, the quality of, of each model. Okay, so I sort of can imagine that you maybe think that this algorithm sort of falls from the, the sky. It's like, why would you come up with this? Um, I will give an extra explanation in, in a couple of slides. So there are, there is some strong motivations why this should work and, and it actually does work. So there's some empirical evidence that I show next. But there are also some clear theoretical motivations uh, for this. Okay, so let's go over the main components of uh, AdaBoost again. So we have our predictive models. So in the end, we have all we have a committee of, of models, uh, YM, each with a, a particular a scoring factor, alpha M, and my final prediction is a weighted average of these. So the models that were performing well, they have a large value for alpha M and therefore they contribute more to the final prediction. And then these predictive weights, alpha M, were obtained by taking the logarithm of one minus my error rate divided by the error rate. And that looks something like this. So basically it says if I have a very low error rate, then really this value uh, alpha M uh, shoots up. So a low error rate means a high importance weight of this particular model. Uh, but then we also see um, that for an extremely large error rate, let's say close to one, it goes to uh, minus infinitely. Uh, but this obviously doesn't happen much, right? Because 
Um, I think it's safe to assume that your model is at least better than uh, random guessing. And random guessing would mean an error rate of 0.5. And therefore it's safe to assume that uh, alpha m is generally uh, bigger than, than zero. And therefore also this weight update term is going to be larger than one. So I'm also always going to increase my weights uh, wn, but some uh, weights are uh, not updated because they were correctly classified and others they are indeed updated with this increase uh, in weight via this exponential. Okay then let's take a look at an example. So here we use a very simple base classifier. So we're going to work with uh, decision stumps. So what a decision stump does, it's essentially a decision tree of, of depth one. So how it works, I have this two dimensional uh, feature space and I'm going to look for a decision boundary that best separates the two. So I'm just going to check if my feature value one, is it larger or smaller than some particular value? And if it's larger, then I assign it to the red class. And if it's smaller, then I assign it to the blue class. And initially this is the best split I can take. I mean, I can also make splits along this direction, but apparently this split is the one that makes the best separation between uh, my data points. So that's what you see over here, this dashed line is my uh, model ym and the green line represents basically the sum alpha m ym so the sum of all these uh, models actually represents the sign right so i'm uh, considering the binary uh, classification problem okay so i now have a classifier that basically says this part belongs to the red class and this part becomes uh, belongs to the blue class Okay, so this is what we just did. So we fit our first very simple classifier to the data that minimizes uh, this error rate and that gave me this particular uh, decision boundary. So this represents my model essentially. And now what I'm going to do, I'm, con I'm going to compute the, the error rates. So obviously now I'm going to make errors and that's indicated with these points. So this one is red, it falls in the blue class. Uh, so this is error and these two blue points are errors. Okay, so I determined uh, the errors in my system and that also allows me to compute this alpha m, so this sort of model accuracy scoring uh, coefficient. And then I can update the weights, right? So every weight which was misclassified, so then this thing is one, uh, is updated based on this alpha m. And that's represented over here. So uh, the circles represent the size, of, the radius of the circles represents the weight of these data points. And now these data points were misclassified, so they get increased weights so they become larger right and uh, actually it seems that these uh, become smaller these weights but what you see over here is actually uh, the normalized uh, weights so actually these weights are the same as before it's just that uh, these uh, points get larger weights uh, but we rescale these images or these these radi radii as well so we use a normalized weight for the mth uh, iteration is each weight is divided by the sum by the sum over uh, all my weights. Okay, and then in this next iteration, now I'm going to uh, retrain my new classifier, but now I weight the importance of these points uh, stronger, right? And that actually leads to a, a, a decision boundary right over here, because these red points, it was very important that they belong to the red, to the red class. So now this becomes my decision boundary, but now I again, I'm going to make errors, right? So uh, this point and this point and this point and this point and this point. Those are all errors that uh, actually lead to the fact that now if I compute this error rate, I still uh, have a relatively large error, so a relatively small model scoring coefficient. So if I look at the current predictions in this case, actually my previous model was doing a, a better job. So if I compute the weighted average of my uh, predictions, so I evaluate my committee model, essentially, it's, the, it's still dominated by, uh, by this first model. So my uh, committee decision boundary is still at the same location. But now I have identified still these points which were misclassified and apparently are hard to, uh, to, to update. So they get, again, a higher weight. So that's what you see over here. Again, it's a rescaling. So these get larger, these points get larger. So you see that these points are larger than uh, these points because they have a larger weight now. Okay, and now with these updated ways, I'm going to retrain a model. So that gives me this optimal decision boundary. And I again recompute the weights and the importance factors, so these alpha m's. So I'm iterating that. 
And you see that they get more and more complex uh, decision boundaries. So these green ones, again, were the predictions of my uh, committee weighted with their uh, importance. And this allows me to come up with a classifier, which has very, which have very complicated uh, decision boundaries. And this final boosted classifier is really just a combination of super simple classifier, which alone don't work very well. But if you use them in this boosting setting, I actually obtain a classifier that does a very good job. Okay, so let's give an interpretation to Ada Boost. What the algorithm is actually doing, it is sequentially update, updating the following error function. So it looks like this, where I take the exponential error of my classifier. So this fm is my committee classifier consisting of up to m of such uh, base classifiers. And well, uh, the classifier itself is a weighted average of these uh, classifiers, right? That's what we saw before. So each fm consists of m uh, committee members. Okay, and then you see that this term quantifies uh, the total error, right? Because n uh, indexes my uh, data points. And this particular term, so this particular term, so tn times fm of xn, that is uh, essentially larger than zero if correct. And if it's incorrect, then it's smaller than zero, right? Uh, because this one is, uh, the target is either one or minus one, and also my prediction is either positive or uh, negative. So this tells me that if my predictions are correct, this term is positive and then times uh, minus one of this exponential. So this total error will be small if I have a lot of correct predictions, uh, but whenever I make a lot of errors, uh, basically this error is large. Okay, so this is an error function that we want to minimize. So we want to minimize a error defined for my entire committee, right? So I have M of such committee members, each of one uh, consists of a model that I want to optimize and a corresponding set of weights that I want to optimize, right? So that's the ultimate goal, to minimize the error with respect to both alpha L and, uh, well, the, the parameters within each uh, base classifier, YL. And that is, of course, super complicated to do. So there's so many parameters and so many dependent, uh, dependencies. So uh, what we're going to do, or what Adaboost actually does, it does a form of sequential minimization, basically fixing all the parameters of the previously trained uh, classifiers, base classifiers, and their corresponding weights, and then only focus on minimizing this error function with respect to the latest uh, committee member, YM alpha M. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to write out uh, this minimization step with respect to YM and alpha M. And then uh, in the end, we'll see that we have derived uh, adder boost. So this is our error function for my committee consisting of M members uh, so far. Okay, so this is just the definition of the error. And then in this step, we're just going to write out uh, this FM term, right? Because FM was given by by this particular expression, right? So it consists of the sum of all my uh, previous uh, committee members. And then, well, we can split the sum in the part up to m is minus one, and then plus the remaining part. And that's what you see over here. So we have tn uh, times fm minus one, so that's the sum up to minus one. And then I still have to add this uh, term at the end times a half ym. So that's the, the, the mth term. And I said I'm going to now only focus on optimizing these alpha m's and y m's. So this particular term is going to be grouped. Um, so this particular term is going to be grouped in uh, this wn uh, parameter, right? It's just splitting of this exponential, and then I'm going uh, and then I'm going to call the exponential of this term. I'm going to call it uh, wn. So wn at iteration m is given by the exponential of minus tn f m minus one xn. Okay, and then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to write it in, in this form uh, that relies on this indicator uh, function, right? So um, that's the purpose of what I'm going to do next. So I'm identifying all the points that were correctly classified. I'm going to denote that with this uh, T of M. And those are all the points essentially for which Tn times Ym is one, right? So a positive uh, value uh, because then the labels coincide. So, and then the signs uh, coincide. Um, and I can also define the misclassified points or the set of misclassified points. Sorry, this should be then misclassified. So the set of misclassified points, those are all the points for which the product uh, TNYM uh, equals uh, minus one. And once we've done that, we can split our error function, right? So I'm splitting the sum over my uh, positive part. So that's uh, step one, essentially. And uh, over this, uh, well, uh, misclassified points. 
And then I'm going to use the following identity that for the positively or the correctly classified point, this product TNYM is equal to one. So TN times one is one. And that gives me this very simple exponential e to the power minus alpha M over two. And for the misclassified point, it, it gives me uh, the following expression, right? Okay, and then we can write this in, into the form of this indicator function, right? So if my predictions are correct, then this thing evaluates to zero. And what I'm left with is just only this particular term, right? So that's correct. So that's for my uh, positive data points. And if my predictions are incorrect, then this thing equals one. And then we have the same term over here. So this is e to the power minus uh, a half alpha m plus the same term over here. So these cancel out in the case of negative predictions and what I'm left is only this term, right? So I'm just rewriting my error function such that I can formulate it in terms of this uh, indicator function, which we saw in, in the adder boost algorithm. Okay, so this is just rewriting the error function, right? So now we obtain this particular error function and now it becomes clear that if you want to minimize with respect to ym, so we see uh, ym only pop up in this location. Uh, this is just a constant with respect to ym. So if I want to minimize this error function, I should focus on minimizing this particular term. And that is precisely um, the objective in my adder boost algorithm. Right, so going back to the Adderboost algorithm, step one was fit a classifier that minimizes this particular objective, which has these weights in them. And these weights is, uh, so this particular form is what we just derived. So these weights were given via this um, exponential uh, grouping, right? Uh, I'll get back to, be to that in a minute. Okay, so when we minimize this exponential uh, error function with respect to my model parameters, it means I have to uh, minimize this particular objective for each of the uh, committee member models. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to minimize uh, with respect to uh, alpha m. I see these alpha m's over here, here, and here. And so if I want to optimize with respect to this thing, I compute the derivative, set it to zero. And this that gives me uh, the following expressions. So I'm not going to write out uh, these particular steps, but for convenience, we now introduce the, this uh, error term uh, epsilon m, which basically arises when we take this derivative, then these components all survive. And then I solve this equation, and in the end, I need to take a logarithm to uh, well to to get to my alpha m's, and that's essentially the recipe that you see here. You can verify it yourself if you want, uh, but the main point is when we uh, solve this equation, we get our expressions for alpha m, which we already saw in the adder boost algorithm, right? So let's go back to the the steps in the algorithm. So step one was fitting this classifier with this objective, and then step two was compute the the weighted error rates, right? So that's the thing that we just derived and it uh, corresponds to the optimal choice for alpha m given my exponential uh, error function that we're minimizing now uh, sequentially. Okay, so we just derived uh, the rules for step A, we just derived the rules for step B, and then of course we need to move to the next model, right? So now basically we're done with uh, defining my committee member ym and the corresponding uh, alpha m, so this model importance uh, parameter, and then we can add a new committee member. Uh, so let's see what we need to do to get there. So basically what you need to do is define the error function or the objective that we want to minimize for this new committee uh, with this newly added uh, committee member, uh, y ym plus one, sorry, ym plus one. So that's really just splitting this function fm plus one, right? This, this was my committee uh, model, so consisting of the sum of all these uh, weighted models. So I'm going to split it uh, as we've done before, where this part is essentially minus the n times my model up to uh, the empt committee member, and this is one, uh, the one that we just added, right? And then before we made this particular factorization where uh, this part was grouped into this uh, wn, and this is the model that we uh, just derived. So that means if we then again write it in this form that we worked uh, with before, then it means we have to group these two terms and call it wn um, at the, the iteration m plus one, right? So we have all these m plus one indices over here, and this groups basically the contributions of all models uh, up to order m. So, uh, and you can derive this uh, sequentially based on what we had before. So this was fixed in the previous iterations and now we're going to fix uh, this thing by just updating wn with the following uh, update rule. Okay, so let's get back to the algorithm slide. We already did step A, we already did step B and now we just derived uh, the update rule for uh, my next uh, set of weights. Though actually in the Adderboost algorithm, this update step was again formulated in terms of this uh, indicator function. So let's quickly do that as well. 
And to do this, we're going to make use of the following uh, property, right? So dn times yn, it takes on the value one whenever I have a correct prediction and it takes on the value minus one when I have an incorrect prediction. Uh, so I can do this, that in terms of this indicator function, right? Because if I make an incorrect prediction, this thing is on. So I have one minus two, it gives me minus one. And when it's off, it gives me one. So I can just insert this in my expression for the update rule that we uh, just derived. And that gives me the following, where again, I can make this factorization, right? Because now I have the exponential of uh, one minus this thing uh, times alpha m. So uh, one times alpha m is, is this particular term. And since this particular exponential does not depend on my data points, right? So it does, it does not depend. It does not depend on n, which means that for every weight, I have this uh, same scaling factor there, which actually is canceled out if you take a look at the algorithm. Let's get back. So if you take a look at this algorithm, then uh, these WNs are normalized in this uh, weighted error rate, right? So that means that this particular uh, term is canceled out uh, anyway, so we can ignore it. And if you then ignore it, then we get precisely the update rule uh, that we saw in the, the algorithm just now. Okay, so this really gives me a recipe for obtaining this boosted committee of classifiers. And then if I want to make predictions with it, so just uh, write this out, like in the derivation that we just did, it turns out that we have this uh, term a half over here, but obviously this term a half uh, doesn't matter because we're looking at the sign and the sign doesn't change if I multiply this thing. So this was actually uh, the final uh, prediction in uh, step three. Okay, so we just really derived uh, the adder boost algorithm. So what we did, we started out with an exponential error function and we want to minimize this uh, sequentially. So that's essentially what we did and that resulted in uh, exactly the adder boost algorithm. So this is a very simple sequential uh, algorithm to train your committee of, of classifiers. Now there are some disadvantages uh, to this because we work with an exponential error function, which means that if uh, my errors for outliers uh, are very large, then uh, yeah, obviously this exponential takes on a very large value. And so my optimization algorithm will be dominated by this uh, outlier. So uh, the boosting algorithm at a boost is somewhat uh, sensitive to outliers. Uh, another possible disadvantage is that we cannot interpret this exponential error function in terms of probabilities. And that's what, what we like to do because that gives me a sense of uh, uncertainty in my models. And another disadvantage is that uh, this method doesn't generalize too easily to uh, multiple classes. Though uh, for the regression case, so for multiple regression targets, this is actually still doable, but in the classification setting, it's, it's somewhat complicated. Okay, so that's it for boosting. It's a very simple algorithm, which as it turns out, can be thought of as a sequentially training a committee that minimizes some exponential error function.